Welcome to the new Chatham County Tax and Land Information web application. This application is designed to provide property information for public users in Chatham County, North Carolina. It includes a variety of easy-to-use tools, or widgets, that offer the ability to search, filter, print, and even export parcel selections. I will now review the basic functionality of the application and briefly showcase the utility of each widget. This is the default layout for when you first open the application. You may notice the map tools in the top left corner of the screen, which allow you to easily zoom in and zoom out, jump between different extents, and return to your home view. Finally, there's the selection widget, which allows you to select between a variety of selection modes, such as the lasso tool. And to make selections with that tool, simply click to start. You can move the mouse and click to create segments, or you can hold the mouse click down to draw curves. To finish your selection, simply double click. You'll then notice that all the features within that vicinity or that intersect that shape will be selected. You can clear your selection using the clear selection button and be sure to toggle off your selection tool. Next, we'll discuss the search widget. The search widget allows you to search for features um, based on their attribute information. And there's a variety of search options in this drop down on the left, including address search, parcel number search, cemetery name or number search, and you can search all of them simultaneously, or you can select a single one at a time if you're searching for a specific feature type. Directly below the search bar is the draw widget, which actually incorporates the measurement tool as well. We can show that by looking at the draw a polyline tool. You first select how you'd like your line to look, and then you can toggle on the show measurement and choose a unit like miles. You can then click on the map, draw your line, and then double click to finish the line. You'll notice that the length measurement of that line appears next to the line. You can easily clear all your drawings by using the erase button and close out of that. The other central widget is the bookmark widget. This one allows you to not only change the view of the map, but it will also automatically toggle on or off layers. To showcase this, we'll click the severed mineral rights view. The map zooms out and the severed mineral rights polygons are turned on. You can now easily click these to see their pop-ups and learn more about them. Now we'll return to our standard view to discuss more widgets. Next, there's the Map Layers widget. This allows you to easily toggle on and off layers as needed. You can also expand each of these data sets to see the layers that are visible within that data set. In addition to that, you can easily reposition your layers to change the drawing order on the map. The legend widget shown here showcases the symbologies that represent the features visible on the map. You can see here that address points are represented by purple dots and parcel polygons are represented by red polygons. The base map widget allows you to easily change the background map in the application, such as a light gray base map, a general purpose base map, or a series of historical aerial imagery base maps. Now let's review the Highlight Parcels widget. This allows you to search and highlight a single parcel via its parcel number, multiple parcels via their parcel numbers, or to apply a spatial filter. For this example, you can select a point, drop it on the map, choose a buffer distance, and then hit Apply you'll see that the parcels that intersect this point or are within a given vicinity of that point are all selected. You can hit the clear results button and reset button to remove your points. Next, we'll showcase the filter GIS data widget. This widget allows you to filter your visible data, such as parcels, based on attribute values. For the first filter, we'll set a range of 100,000 to 500,000 for the value of the parcel, and turn that filter on. You'll see that only parcels that have values between 100,000 and 500,000 remain visible. 
These filters are also additive. So if you also wanted to know what parcels exist within a specific subdivision, you can select that here, toggle on that filter, and now you're only seeing parcels that are valued between 100 and 500,000 that exist within this subdivision. And use the bottom right button to reset all your filters. Now we'll discuss the advanced parcel query widget. This widget allows you to select multiple parcels that share the same attribute value. For example, maybe we're looking for parcels that have the same city code. We can choose city code from the list of parcel queries. Then from this dropdown, choose the city code that we'd like. We'll go with Bear Creek. Now click apply. In the tool, we'll select all parcels that have a city code of Bear Creek and highlight them and zoom to them on the map. You can easily clear your results by using the trash can button, the reset button, and the back button to return to your original query menu. Next, we'll move on to the parcel buffer widget. This widget allows you to interactively select the parcel, generate a buffer of a given distance, and then showcase which parcels intersect that buffer. First, you'll have to select the Draw Input Features button, place a point on the map, choose a buffer distance, we'll go with 500, and then select Run. Once that tool completes, it will zoom into the area, showcase the parcel buffer in a dark orange, and the parcels that intersect that buffer in a lighter orange. To reset things after use of this tool, it's easiest just to refresh the page. Next, I'll discuss the parcel report widget. This widget allows you to interactively place a point, polyline, or polygon feature on the map and find parcels that are within a vicinity of that shape. We'll add a point to the map, choose a distance of 1,000 feet, and then click inside the widget to generate the result. The parcel summary table can be easily exported to a CSV file, and your results are easily cleared using the clear button. Finally, I'll discuss the print widget. For the print widget, it simply prints whatever you're seeing on the application screen. So I'll zoom into the area of interest. I'll choose my template. I'll change my map title. And I'll set some advanced settings. And then hit print. The results of my print job will show up in the results tab. And when it's complete, you can click that link and easily download your map and print it.